Hi, welcome back to my channel. Going to be doing a review today for The Meg from 2018. And this is a film that I didn't see back when it came out, just for whatever reason, really was not feeling in the mood to go and see a Jason Statham versus Giant Shark movie. Uh, but I have to admit, seeing the trailer the other day for the new one coming out, I think I think it looked quite fun. I was like, I can see myself popping out to see that an evening when it comes out. So I thought, why not check out the original and see what it's all about? And I'm realising now that I shouldn't have bothered because this movie was terrible. And I know you're probably asking, you know, why would you expect a movie about Jason Statham fighting a shark to be good? But I feel like even with those expectations it still manages to fail on pretty much every single level that it can. And there is very, very little for me to recommend here. So yeah, the story here is about these group of scientists who are out in the ocean doing these research missions. And one of them ends up going wrong. So they have to get back in contact with Jason Statham's character, who's like this ex-rescue diver. Uh, so he's called in to help these people and in doing so they end up discovering that there is a giant prehistoric shark on the loose. To be honest here, Jason Statham was the only thing that made this movie even nearly watchable. Uh, you know, I really do quite like him as an actor, to be honest. You know, he's got a lot of charisma. Uh, he's a convincing action star and he's pretty funny. Uh, so I've got, you know, he definitely stands out here as being way too good for the material he's in. Uh, and, you know, I, I think a lot of the movies that he acts in are crap, to be honest. But uh, as an actor, you can tell that he's just way above this. So I don't I don't really know why uh, he wanted to get involved in this project, because this was rough to get through, to be honest. This really was pretty bad. And just because I feel like if you're making a movie like this, it's meant to be like a dumb shark movie. There's so many thing, easy wins you could have done to make this a more entertaining experience. Like the first mistake here, making this a 12 or what I guess would be a PG-13 in America. Uh, so you can't even have the sort of fun, gory kills you'd hope to have in a comedy horror involving a giant shark. You can't even do that and it kills so much of the entertainment here. Like there's even this ridiculous scene at the start where you're introduced to Jason Statham's character where he was going onto this sub on a rescue mission and it goes wrong and he ends up seeing this shark. Uh, and it's basically attacked this crew on the submarine and it like slow cuts to this guy where you're expecting to see that like he's been mauled to near death, lost his legs or something. And he's just got this tiny little scratch <laughs> from this, you know, absolutely you know, ridiculously large shark. And it was just ridiculous. I, ju I just knew at that point I wasn't going to be able to enjoy or take anything in the film seriously. Same thing as well goes here for the comedy, like the jokes aren't funny. Uh, a lot of it comes off really lame. And like, yeah, again, because of that sensory, they can't even go extreme with any of it. So it all just falls really flat. And, you know, they're not making Jaws here. So, you know, trying to make a film that's intense, exciting and has a great story with that sort of lower age rating that's suitable for more people. It was just never going to work with this film. They should have been aware of what they were making, make it more extreme and make it more fun just for an older audience. So just to make a comparison, uh, if you know the movie Piranha 3D, which came out like 10 or 11 years ago now, you know, not incredible cinema, but I just thought it was incredibly entertaining and did exactly what it set out to do. You know, it was self-aware. It decided to go no censors, full out extreme, very bloody, tons of nudity, crazy characters you could get invested in. And it was just an a thoroughly enjoyable watch. And I feel like if, if the Meg had copied the blueprint of, of uh, Piranha 3D, we'd have had a much better movie here. And to be fair, OK, like Piranha did have, it was a very talented filmmaker, Alexander Aja. He's really quite good. So maybe that's just why the film came off a lot better to me. I'm not sure. But I just felt like this one should have done everything that that, that Piranha was setting out to do. And I think we would have got something far better here. But yeah, also the characters weren't interesting. The acting was bad. The love interest they set up for Jason Statham was not convincing at all. There was no chemistry. It was no fun. Uh, just, yeah, none of it worked, to be honest. In the final sequence, too, you have, 
you know, the final battle going on, which is effectively Jason Statham going for the final takedown on the shark. And I can't actually even remember how it even connected into this other scene, but suddenly we cut away and now we're on a beach, uh, which I guess is off the coast of China near where this trench is. And it feels like they just wanted to have that one crazy scene where you have havoc at the beach with a giant shark and, you know, but again, because of those sensors, they can't really do anything with it. So you just have a lot of screaming. There's no dialogue. It's just only screaming. People splashing about in the water, a few rubber rings going under and that's it. And, and it felt like all of it was literally just to have as well this one ridiculous scene where this dog, this cute little dog, abandons a family on a yacht, jumps into the sea and swims off. And it's all just to set up the final scene, which is this dog and Jason Statham swimming back in together after having defeated the shark. It was it was so ridiculous. I was noticing as well, there is a bit of a strange tone, I guess, about the movie. You'll know what I mean if you've seen it. Something about it doesn't feel like a normal American blockbuster and reading up about it afterwards seeing that this was actually like a co-production between a Chinese and an American film studio that kind of explains it you know they were trying to apparently make this for a Chinese audience where Jason Statham is very popular and stuff but maybe that's why for me just some of these character dynamics some of the humor just doesn't really work it just feels like the tone of the movie feels a little bit confused to me doesn't really know what it wants to be and yeah, just just all around this whole thing, it just at the end of it, it just felt like none of it really worked. So yeah, nothing to really recommend about the Meg, unfortunately. I may do a review for the second one uh, if the mood hits me right and I end up going to see it. But let's hope they've learned their lessons from this first one and kind of fixed a few of those things and made it a f more fun movie. As I said, the trailers for it do give me a little bit of hope that it's going to be more fun than this one. But to be honest, you can't do a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, this was pretty rough. So I think I'm probably going to give it a one and a half out of five. I think Jason Statham does bring a little bit of entertainment, but it fails on pretty much every other level. So thanks a lot for watching my review of The Meg. Please do as well leave me a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you next time.